Hey, everybody. Welcome to another week of Be My Guest, episode number eight, continuing to move right or wrong. And we have another great guest, as always. We've gotten a lot of great people coming on here, getting a lot of great feedback, as I continue to say. And even more importantly, now I'm getting a lot of people reaching out wanting to join. So we are going to have a lot more episodes of Be My Guest, telling hospitality stories, telling your true story. Uh, so as always, the open plea to anybody who does want to join, reach out to me, uh, David Mignano, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. Uh, I've put it up enough. If you're seeing this visually you're on, or uh, through video, you're on LinkedIn anyway. If you're in the podcast listening audio, it's linkedin.com slash I-N slash D-M-I-G-N-A-N-O. But we're going to get right to it because I have a lot to talk about with my guest today, Chastity Rivera Santiago. So she is a hospitality professional through and through she is one of those people that you hear that is just growing through the ranks coming up starting at the the bottom level and moving her way up we worked together a couple years ago at the marriott newark airport uh which was a great time with her we both worked pm shift she was in housekeeping house at front desk so obviously we worked very close together and uh i know i learned a lot at that hotel uh, i'll let her talk about her experience at that hotel but Point being, if you've never worked at an airport property before, it gets pretty crazy, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, not only the guests sometimes, but also just the uh, turnover. You know, the airport properties, especially ones like ours, which was on the airport property itself. You know, we ran that hotel, I think, yearly occupancy was around a 92, 93. You know, this is a couple of years ago, obviously. But we also turned about 90% of the hotel over every day. So we were pumping things out left and right. And we had to be very, very coordinated to make it happen. So uh, that really springboarded you know, a lot of my career as I transferred to revenue management outside of that property. And Chastity will talk about where she's currently at, which is a, a premier property up in Manhattan or where she was at before being furloughed. So I'm just going to bring her on, let her tell her story before I keep talking too much. So Chastity, welcome. Hey, David. How are you? Good. Thank you for being my guest today. You know, I got a little ahead of myself there telling your story because, you know, we lived it for a little bit together. We so. did. We did. We had a, a lot of great stories. <laughs> great being a very relative term. Funny, for sure. Yeah. Funny is definitely for sure. So, Chastity, um, kind of the same thing we're going to talk about here. Again, you're a hospitality professional through and through, like I said. I and uh, we're going to talk about that in a second, but you're currently furloughed from a major property up in Manhattan, as yes. we just talked about. And, you know, we talk about our previous hotel pumping things out. Your hotel also has to pump a lot of stuff out. So um, you really were driving a lot of career growth with those properties. So why don't we start from the back? Where did you start? Uh, how did you get to kind of the point that you were or are? Um, I got into hospitality pretty much um, as as kind of a means to an end. Um, I actually, I studied, uh, I have an associate's degree in liberal arts because I wanted to be a paraprofessional. Um, and at that time, all you needed was an associate's degree to be a paraprofessional. Um, but then I started having kids and building a family and I decided I was going to stay home and, and take care of my kids. Um, but when my marriage failed and I needed a job, um, a friend of mine knew, uh, someone who worked for, um, Marriott and it was like, you know, okay, why don't you apply to this position? You'd be perfect for it. And it kind of just, you know, I took to it like a fish to water. Um, I started out as a clerk, uh, moved up to a lead night auditor, um, moved into management, moved into, you know, I was doing front office, a little bit of F and B operations, front of the house. Um, and then I transitioned to back of the house and housekeeping where I guess my heart really lies with the back of the house people. Um, and I just kept going. My current position is ass assistant director of services, um, which is awesome because I've made my, I've grown with a company I've learned, you know, hands on. Um, but, you know, being furloughed, it's, it's kind of like, you know, where do I go from here? Yeah. You know, um, part of, part of, I think for me is the fact that I got to develop managers. I got to work with different people. I was, you know, helping people take their steps in careers now. And now I'm faced with, I don't know whether or not I, will be called back. I don't know if that's still a possibility. And if it's not, then how do I transition all that I learned there into a new career? 
right. and basically start from the bottom again because you know, I'm not going to get an assistant director's level position or director's level position with just an associate's degree. You know, and that's you obviously a lot to break down there. And I think your story is very typical of a lot of hotel professionals where, yeah, there's people that want to be in the industry and they go to school for it. But a lot of us got into it out of necessity, me being one of them. You know, I went to school for communications, was going to be in broadcast journalism, radio, TV. And um, thanks to a very lackluster market for jobs coming out of the recession, you know, I got into hotels too because I had a wife and a young child and I needed a job. Got into night audit part-time and worked my way up through there. And, you know, that's the story of a lot of people. And there's a lot of pride behind that. You can tell the pride that you feel that you started as a entry level clerk and you have moved up to this assistant director of guest services. And let me tell you guys, again, we're, we're intentionally not talking about hotels in the show, but specific properties in the show, but the property that chastity is at is about a, as big of a hotel as you can get. So an assistant guest director of services is yeah. probably equivalent to director of operations in many, many hotels. Um, well, you look, yeah. If you look at a comparison to like select service or you know things like that, you know the position that I'm in is is almost like AG kind of, yeah. You know uh, levels, um, which is awesome and it's great. And I and I am thankful for the opportunities that I was given and and the fact that I was able to grow this much. The issue is is now the industry is basically, you know, what is it so minute and the. The, there's so many people applying and looking for those same jobs with better qualifications than I have, right? Or the same qualifications that I have. And it's so saturated with people that you're you're kind of fighting for these, you know, drippings of jobs to be able to work. Yeah, I mean, and that's the biggest challenge I think a lot of people are facing. And I'll just give an example for myself. It happened today, this morning. And granted, this is going to play after we record this, but... Right. Um, I applied for a AGM position at a hotel in uh, Minnesota and um, spoke to the head of HR there and we had a really great conversation and he thought I was a great candidate and got the notice today that I'm not going to be moved forward. And just not as a question of how dare you not take me, but hey, what could I have done better type of thing? Uh, And he said nothing. You, You had everything you wanted. We just had so many more candidates with so many more years of experience that applied. And at that point, you know, I, I reached out to the HR guy. I reached out to the GM. I made myself stand out, and there's nothing I could have done. It's just, but you, but you know, this is the stuff that you learned as a hospitality professional, right? Exactly. You apply for a job, and then you reach out to them, and you say thank you, and you make yourself stand out, and you do all the great things that make us wonderful candidates. But we're all kind of cut from the same cloth. We all know to do that. Yeah. So it's like you have to up your level Mm -hmm. to stand out. So it's like, you know, what else can I do to make, you know, myself look, you know, employable and wonderful and as an asset? Um, You know, I, 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 I was talking to you previously that, you know, I went on an interview for a job that was not in the hospitality industry. And the person was like, well, your resume is very impressive, but you realize, you know, it's sitting in front of a computer making appointments. Right. And I was like, I understand that. Yeah. But I need to put food on my kid's table, you know, which is the backside of it, right? You know, we have families to support. And, you know, with the indecisiveness of what's happening, you know, you have to look for whatever you can get now. And it's, and it's unfortunately, it's a kick in the gut, right? Yeah. You know, it's it's a kick in the gut. And and one of the things that I'm seeing and a lot of people that are applying for positions, whether inside, but even more so outside of the industry is the lack of understanding of people outside of the industry of how much skills transfer from hospitality. I mean, yes, if you're a tech person, you may not, if it's a tech company, you may not have the zeros and ones technical skills, but guess what? You probably have a customer service team. I mean, there, I see customer success manager positions for tech companies out there every day. Right. I've applied to several of them. Uh, didn't even get a response. And I'm not saying that I was a better candidate than the people that they went with. But the point being is that I've seen a lot of frustration from people in the industry that 
are feeling qualified for a lot of these positions that are outside of the industry and they're just not getting responses because they quote unquote are not part of that original industry and i think that people need to recognize in other industries that hotel people hospitality people in general whether it be restaurants hotels cruises airports i mean we deal with so much stuff and i'm going to use stuff to keep a pc on a daily basis that you wouldn't even believe how qualified we are i'll tell you right now any chastity can go into any company in any department or any type of field and run your customer service team and she'll right. do it probably better or as well as anybody you have because she knows how to do that she's had to do that Thank for you. so long and but there's, i think that that there's a there's a point for that right where the other industries the lack of knowledge of what a hospitality um professional you know the things that they can uh, you know bring to the company it's yeah. not only customer service right but we know how the to change that experience mm -hmm. for their clients build relationships how to build that how to make it something that's personal because when you connect with someone on a personal level it makes it a deeper connection so if, they don't if, understand that and if you want a dynamic person who right. can stand up to any, any challenge getting thrown at them whether they've dealt with it before or not and deal with 15 things at once hospitality yeah. i mean i don't know a more dynamic workforce than a hospitality professional that has to deal with everything going on again whatever part of hospitality you're in and i've worked in several levels between restaurants and hotels it's all very similar. You can deal with anything. You can deal with everything type of thing. But it also, we also are loyal. Um, yes. Uh, hospitality workers are loyal. You know, it's not a hotel. It's their hotel. True. You very know, true. You, you know, as, and you, you can attest to this as managers, you know, we work. It's our hotel. If yeah. something happens, it's our hotel. There's mm -hmm. a flood. There's a fire. There's, you know, an issue. There's a, you know, domestic dispute. There's, there's a guy on the sixth floor know, trying to break down a door in his underwear. Yeah, you know, like it we is not, <laughs> it's not, this is my boss's hotel. This is my hotel. This is what I'm taking care of. There's yeah. a sense of ownership and loyalty that hospitality professionals have that not many other people have. And it's because it's ingrained in us, right? Mm -hmm. It's ingrained in us to build you know, this is ours. We're empowered. We make it, we make the experience what it is for every person that walks through those doors. And I think other companies and other industries can benefit from those skills. Absolutely. You know, you know, if imagine if you take hospitality professionals and put them into hospital settings, you're dealing with patients. Imagine how much, you know, that face to face contact would be so much better if it had a little bit of a hospitality kick to it. Yeah. Right. If you went to register at the dentist's office and the person was smiling, if you, you know, you go to your, 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 your doctor's appointment and the person is like, Hey, welcome. How are you? Nice to see you. I remember you, you know, those are the kinds of things that we learn coming up through this business and can benefit in other aspects of other industries. But I just don't think that they've kind of figured that out because if they had, you know, they would say, well, these are the people I want to target. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and part of that goes into is, listen, if anybody who's been in hospitality for any sustained length of time, if you're not like that, you won't make it. No, so that's right. People that are, if someone's in hospitality for over a year, essentially, you can be pretty, pretty fair, fairly certain that that is who that person is. It's not a facade. It's not an interview smile. Like that's who they are because if they didn't have that ingrained in them, they're not making it in hotels because it will eat you up. And anybody out there listening, I'm sure you can attest to that. It's true. I mean, and I think that's kind of how we deal with the furlough. I think many of us have put on our, you know, our hospitality faces at home because it's like, you know, well, okay. I'm, you know, when I get first got furloughed, it was like, okay, it's only going to be for three months. Who in hospitality gets a vacation for three months? <laughs> Right. You work seven, sometimes seven days a week, depending on what's going on. If it's, you know, whatever, you don't get a lot of time off. Right. So you look at it as, OK, you know, I said, all right, you know, I'll spend some time with the family. It's only three months. I, I can do this. You know, and then you get furloughed again and you're like, well, woof, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, and you, you get scared and you're worried about it. I mean, I have the benefit of having a husband who's working and, and you know, he's been able to work through the pandemic, which is, you know, has been um, a help. But it's still I have three kids in, you know, one kid graduating high school and two kids in college. It's right. not you know, I can't be on furlough forever. 
no, you know, course. I have to, I have to figure out what my next steps are going to be. And what kind of like, you know, is that weird place is that I'm loyal to my, to my hotel, my hotel, I'm loyal and I want to be there and I want my job. Right. But I don't know if that's going to be available. So I need to make sure that I'm making moves and waves to be able to survive once, you know, I, I get a definite, you know, yay or nay. Yeah. And I mean, and, and the unfortunate and the difficult part, I think, for yourself and myself and a lot of people that are in that same mindset is, yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. And honestly, your yeah. company probably doesn't know what's going to happen. No. We're all. On and, and that's the thing. Like, who are you going to be mad at? Yeah. Who can you be mad at? Because they didn't expect this, you know, before, before, before the pandemic, before Corona, it was, um, we were in renovations and we had all these plans and all these things. And I was on a, a trajectory to learn and do things, um, to get that director's position, which was mm. my next step, you know, right. and it, it stopped. It's, yeah. it's done. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of picking up things here or there that are changing in the industry and doing my own little online, you know, um, courses to keep up to date with what's happening. But it, you know, what, we, where do I go from there? Right. You know, so that I think that that kind of limbo is what is what really bothers most of us who I've talked to and myself is the not knowing. Yeah. And, and you bring up a great point and, and something I want to touch on because you're talking about how, again, you've started at, at entry level and worked your way up to this great position in this great iconic hotel in mm -hmm. an iconic global city. And you're about, I won't say you're about to, but you're working on making the move to that next step. And your career has been just up, 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 rising. And it's there's yeah. as of February, there's no end in sight, right? Right. And then, and I was in a similar path. And a large part of that is the dedication. A large part of that is the work ethic. A large part of that is to a degree luck. And a large part of that is the expansion in the industry, right? You know, right. as of February, there was a million open jobs. So we were in the right spot at the right time with the yep. right work ethic to take advantage of that. And then March comes and it all comes crashing down. And that trajectory just goes from a nice gradual incline to a straight decline. What's going through your mind as that's happening? Um, honestly, I, I, I'm a great woman of faith and, you know, I, I, I a lot of prayer, <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of prayer, but the thought that, you know, nothing is really going to, not, nothing's going to keep me down. Think about it like that. Right. The only person who can continue is me. Right. I, I determine what I do and how I go and how I get there. Um, so, you know, I just looking into things that I can take all of the stuff that I learned in hospitality and apply it to, and really just, you know, wow people on an interview, you know, if I get lucky enough to get an interview, because they mm. see my resume and then they're like, you know, you're overqualified, you're, you have, you know, this, or you don't have that. So I'm either overqualified or undereducated. <laughs> Yeah, even one. and we talked about this. this. This is something that I've been seeing is kind of this, and I'm not sure if we talked about it on a previous episode of Be My Guest, but we have on other episodes of other, other conversations. And I've seen the mid-level manager just seems to be kind of forgotten almost. Yeah. We're in this kind of abyss where a lot of the positions are executive level leadership or entry level. And we're kind of lost in that middle. So if you're an entry level or sorry, a mid-level manager, whether it be an AGM, front office manager, director of guest services, and you're feeling a little bit lost because you're having trouble, you can't, you're having trouble stepping up to the next role because of the abundance of quality candidates. And you're having trouble in your mind with the idea of taking a step, three steps back to like, say a front desk agent. And you're kind of caught in this middle, you know, um, purgatory per se. You're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> you are not you alone. You are not alone. We, you, I, and if you feel very isolating, you are not alone. Trust me. And chastity is an example of that right now. I'm an example of that right now. Um, so so please feel free to reach out to me again. We can definitely talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. It's a lot of people dealing with that. So um I think I think I would say if you do have to start again though, um just think of the possibilities with all the stuff that you know now and you have to start over again. You know, and I think that that's probably one of the things that I, I think about a lot is if I have to start over again, you know, think about what the outcome is going to be. If I made it this far and I start over, how far am I going to get this way? 
you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, hoping that there'll be a turnaround in, in, you know, early, um, 2021. Um, but you know, it's Q4 and Q4, you know, there's not that much hiring in Q4, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, I'm hoping, you know, that we'll see some turnaround Q1 of 2021. And, you know, if, if we do and things, you know, start picking up, you know, I'm hoping that all of us collectively who are in the same kind of limbo, you know, will have a direction come that time. And part of that is, and you mentioned 2021, and I, I truly believe this when I say this, you know, again, we are in this limbo and it's tough to get out of it and it's tough to yeah. see out of it, right? But to your point about, hey, maybe maybe if you do have to take a step back or two steps back or three steps back, there is going to be a hiring frenzy when we do come out of this because hotels right. are going to have to restaff. It may not be at the same staffing level as it was prior, but they will have to restaff. Mid-level roles will have to be refilled. It's 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 not a question of if, it's a question of when, right. because it mm -hmm. has to happen. Hotels right. cannot operate on the current staffing levels. It's not possible. That's there true. is a lot of people leaving the industry, whether by choice, whether by force, whether by retirement, and there is going to be a vacuum of opportunity in the next, I would say, 12 months, if we can get to that point. Yeah. So if you can, if you're someone who's out there is, is kind of lost, maybe the answer is, and I'm just throwing something out there. If you're able to financially take a step or two back, maybe take that in a company that you really believe in, research a lot of companies, find a company that you really believe in and you really want to work for that maybe you couldn't have gotten into prior for whatever reason, get in there on that secondary, maybe third level type of role. And then when that hiring frenzy happens for that company, you are right there to jump in. So not only do you have the experience, you have the knowledge, you already have the in as well. You're an internal candidate. That could be an opportunity. Again, your situation may be different. That may not be doable. I get it. But if it is, there's at least something to think about. Well, also, too, the industry is going to be way different when we go back. You know, it's it's going to be a different industry, you know, that you're, you're changing how people are traveling, you're changing how, you know, operations happen, right? Um, so, you know, look at it as an opportunity to dip your toe into another, maybe department, maybe yeah. you never thought of going back of the house, if you're a front of the house manager, you know, think about maybe going into housekeeping and learning those things of, you know, of what it takes to keep a hotel clean, especially in this environment, right? Yeah. And you'll be able to gain that experience and you may not go in as, as, you know, manager, but if you go in as a supervisor in a different department, you're also growing your skills and building your resume. So you're not only just a front office manager or just a, a housekeeping manager or just an ops manager, maybe F and B a little bit, you know, you build that and that helps you round out your resume, round out your experience so that then when you are presented with that ag or gm position you can say yes i have experience in front office and and, fe and food and beverage and housekeeping and not just in one discipline you know and that's so important that you bring that up chastity it really is because you know i do a lot of work as you may or may not know with no vacancy live and we talk to a lot of c-level executives I'm in, I'm in constant communication with a lot of um HR people, uh, and we're actually, I'm actually working on planning a virtual job fair in two weeks. Again, two weeks from when I record this, this show is going to be posted after that's completed. But um, a lot of the conversation is about the changing dynamics of roles within hotels. And it's not going to be as streamlined as it was. You're not going to be just a front office manager. You're not going to be just a housekeeping supervisor. You're going to have to have that multi-department discipline, discipline and that multi-department um, expertise. So to your point, again, if you're someone who maybe has 10 years of experience in front office operations, this may be a time to take that quote unquote step back into an F&B supervisory role, into a housekeeping supervisory role, because that's going to put you in a better position for what the market is going to be looking for. And that's coming straight from the people who are going to be hiring's mouths. I'm, I'm telling right. you. It, 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 it's true. Today. It's very true. I mean, I have, you know, I have front office, I have back of the house, I have very little F and B, but you know, someone back in the day said to me, you know, if you can dip your toe in all the departments, do it because it will help you later on, yeah. you know? And, and if you have to look at that, I mean, I, 
I don't know what the future holds. I know that, you know, I'm a person who is, you know, ready and willing to get my hands dirty and whatever happens. And so, you know, if I have to take, you know, a role in a different department or, or you know, take a step back in order to progress, then I'll do that. And that's a great Just don't be afraid to do it. I think don't be afraid to take those steps. Don't be afraid to, you know, try something different. And don't feel that it's, so I put this, don't feel that it's, try not to take offense to it, I guess you could say. You know, it's it's not easy to swallow your pride and say, I got to take a step back or two, right? Right. It's difficult, especially when you've worked so hard to get to where you are. But if that taking a step back or two is going to spring you forward, two or three or four steps further when things do turn around, it's going to be worth it. And you're going to look back at that opportunity and say, wow, that was the time. That was what made this happen. That is the one thing that made the difference for me to where I currently right. am. Right. And, and I, I promise you it's going to happen. Yeah, I promise you. You know, and I and I don't I don't want to like I, I don't want to candy coat everything and say that it isn't hard and this being in this limbo is not easy. And there aren't days where I'm just like, you know what? the heck is happening um but i will say that you know it's we're all going through it and it, it's kind of you know a little solace that i'm not the only one yeah you know it's a it's a little solace that i'm not the only one i think i miss the most is is you know my mentoring and 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 having you know watching people come out of college that i'm able to mentor and and teach and then see them take off and and do things that you know i'm like that's amazing you know i remember when you started here and i miss that part of it i miss the camaraderie because you talk to these people every day yeah you know and then you know you're you're home and you kind of don't want to call the people who are working because you're like they're working i don't want to bother them i know that they probably have like 10 times as much work on their plate yeah than when we were there so you know it's it's a lot of loss a it loss is. of identity, a loss of, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I didn't know how much of me was wrapped up in what I did at work until I didn't have work. Yeah. No, you know? you're 100% right. And so that, that leads to a great point then. As this is happening and you're feeling all these emotions, you know, uh, like you, like anybody else, I'm sure has gotten to be down to different levels at different point emotionally and mentally. And you talk about keeping that hospitality smile on at home you know obviously your children are, are older yeah which may or may not be be beneficial because they have a better understanding of what's happening than right. a younger person a younger kid we had a show uh recently with my former gm paul who was telling me that he had to uh announce the layoff of one of the housekeepers to his to her I think it was a six-year-old child because they needed a translator and she preferred the, the son to do it than the HR rep that we that was on staff to do it or on site to do it. And Paul's heart, you know, he's telling me the story, my heart's breaking. Yeah. You know. So how do you go about going through all these emotions, all these difficult feelings, while still trying to have to put on a happy face for your family? And let I them wouldn't, know I, gonna... I wouldn't say honestly, honesty is the best way to do it. Um you know, my, my children have seen me go from, you know, overnight clerk, you know, all the way up to the position that I have. You know, they've been with me through thick and thin. Um, you know, I, they were home when Sandy hit and I was at the hotel. And, you know, they know what it is to have someone who works in the, in the hospitality industry. They know it. Um, I think that honesty is the best way to deal with it. You know, be honest with them. Let them know what's happening. You know, be honest with yourself that you're feeling sad or that you're feeling the loss because it is a loss. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, you, you're grieving. And the best way to deal with grief is to be honest about it and accept it and, and know that, you know, you'll get out of it. It's not an endless um, thing. Right. Yeah. You know, there, there is going to be a, a light at the end of this tunnel and, yeah. you know, be it back in your hotel or be it back in hospitality or you find a different venue, something that brings you joy. Um, you know, I think that that's how you deal with it. Um, I picked up quilting. I quilt. I, 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 did you quilt, fact, did you quilt I have, prior I have to that? Huh? Did you quilt prior to COVID or is this something you'd learned as COVID? No, actually it's something that I've been doing 
I did a little bit of it prior to COVID. I picked it up as a stress reliever for, for work kind of thing. And I just have dived into it. And I've quilted blankets for my, my children, for my son-in-law, for my mom, for my, my mother-in-law, you know, and it gives me something to do. And I feel accomplished when I'm finished. So get yourself a hobby. <laughs> Let's see one. Let me see one. I'm going to put you on a uh, one shot. I want to see it. I don't know how much of it you can see, but. Wow. And you, you, you did that whole thing from scratch. Yes. Wow. And looks comfortable. It is. It's very. I, I think I'm going to need one, honestly. And, you know, look, for Christmas. You did that too? Yes. Chastity, that's really great work. It's stuff. It's But see, this is the thing, right? I'm, I just just me. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with excellence. So <laughs> I taught myself and I sit at my machine and I do it. And when I really feel kind of like, you know, not sure what's going to happen or, you know, it's kind of like an anxiety reliever. Um, but, you know, you, you find those things. People bake. Some people bake. I bake. I cook. You know, all those things. But you find something to throw that energy into. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's something you finish. You feel accomplished. Look, I did this. This is awesome. Right? And you keep going. Um, that, for me, worked. I don't know if it works for everybody. But for me, it's, you know, my, my, my projects, my cooking, my baking. Those things make me feel accomplished. And I keep going from there. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think it's so important when you talk about how these the quilting and the baking gives you a feeling of accomplishment, and that's so important because there's really so many so much negativity and so much rejection around a lot of us that it's tough to feel accomplished, right? Right. So you can find either a hobby that you already had, or you picked one up. You know, my my accomplished hobbies per se are no vacancy and the success we've had with the show. I'm learning to trade foreign currency, so forex trading, and I'm getting better at that. And I'm feeling accomplished at that. So that's keeping me on the upbeat. That's keeping right. me with a positive mindset. So listen, if you're someone out there who maybe you feel like you don't have a hobby, because I know I felt like that for a very long time, especially in hospitality, it's not easy to get a hobby when you're working. It's not. <laughs> try different things. Try quilting. Try baking. Try stock trading if you can. You know, there's plenty of demo accounts out there where you can just do use free money. Right. So it's just yeah. play, it's play monopoly money. You just try it, have some fun with it. Um, whatever it may be, building a car, who knows? There's a million things. Try them all. Well, uh, there's a lot of online classes and, and sources YouTube that are videos. coming out that yeah, that that people can get into if you feel if if that gives you pleasure and that's something that you can um feel accomplished with finish, finishing a course. You know, going to the gym is not for me, but it's for other people. You you know, you you work out, take you know, I take walks every so often with my kids. Um, but whatever makes you feel like you have finished something. Mm. You know, you feel that success of finishing something, right? Mm. I did this, I accomplished this, and it gives you kind of that boost. And I think that in this time, you know, especially now around the holidays, right? You 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 want to enjoy them. So enjoy them. You know, do the things that make you happy. Mm. And you know, everything else kind of will, will work out in the end. And you know, I, I do believe that we'll see a turnaround in 2021. I do believe that, you know, we're gonna get back to hotels. I won't say normal because I don't think um there's a, ever going back to what we once knew. Um, but just be excited about the new things that'll come down and the new things that you'll learn and and be able to see and do and you know hopefully travel again yeah you know so and, it, yeah and i was gonna say if anybody out there if you're trying to find something to feel accomplished again it doesn't have to be something as detailed as quilting it doesn't have to be something as complicated as running a podcast it could just be reading a book yeah it could be finishing that tv series you've always wanted to finish and just binging out on netflix i mean it could be anything that you just feel proud of if you feel accomplished out that will really just get that feeling going so don't think it has to be something drawing coloring book my wife likes to color an adult coloring book she loves it when she's feeling down she does it she feels great afterwards it could be something simple as that i mean there's anything there's millions there's of so things. much out there there's so much out there and you know you just put your hand to it and if it works it works if it doesn't find something else volunteer maybe you find yeah. something that you really enjoy and try to volunteer within that field and that's honestly another way that you may be able to transition industries right so i'll give an example let's say for some reason you are really into museums and uh you haven't been able to get into a museum for a career perspective well maybe right now is a good time to volunteer at a museum and get in and get that resume up 
this is a great time to volunteer if you're having trouble finding something to do to to go ahead and um not only build your resume but find that accomplished feeling yeah that's that's a great suggestion you learn a new language there's so many apps out Duol there where you can learn a new language duolingo you know? I, I i use and that's that. also that's also something that they look for when they're hiring hospitality professionals is that you know more than one language so learn another language you know there's a lot of things that that they're out there that you can do at your fingertips that will make you feel accomplished while you're waiting to you know know what's going on or while you're still looking or waiting for that call for that interview you know there's a lot out there that we can do to keep ourselves pepped up and keep in contact with the people that you know you you know are going to make you feel good you know that mm -hmm. talk to you and pep you mm -hmm. up and you know and and say hey you know what i think you're great and i know you're great at this why don't you try this and suggest and help you know help someone find their way sometimes doing that makes you feel you know accomplished because you you've you know help somebody get you know a direction yeah no i mean that's that's all great advice and everybody out there that's watching this video you can just see the energy that chastity brings <laughs> to any conversation and i mean it's not because she's on camera with me. I mean, I've been working with her and talking to her before all this. This is who she is. So, Chastity, again, you're, you're giving some great ideas. You're great recommendations. You. You're talking about your accomplishments. What advice, aside from finding something to find accomplished, because we just touched on that very, yeah. very well, but what advice would you maybe give somebody who is feeling those blues and they're just having trouble even saying, I don't even want to do anything? You know, I don't want to pick up a hobby. I don't want to, quote unquote, feel accomplished because I'm just so down. And, and listen, if you feel that way, again, we've said it in past episodes, that's fine. Yeah, that's it's okay. It's okay. Do not feel bad about feeling bad. No. But what would be advice? Take, that, take that, that day and sleep it off. You know, if you want to sleep, sleep. You want, you know, I I, I think um, one of my go-to things when I'm kind of, and it's, it's I'm going to admit this on, uh, on this live, I play PlayStation. I knew everyone out and I play PlayStation. Um, my son-in-law cracks me up because he'll 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 play online with me. But sometimes you need that mind numbing thing, right? Not so you're not thinking about <laughs> anything but no, what's I, happening. I hundred percent I'm laughing because even during the pandemic, that's the same thing I've done. Where and, I'm I tell my wife I need a mind numbing something that I'm not gonna think about what, what what's happening. I'm not gonna think about where my money's coming from, I'm not gonna think about what bills I have to pay. Mm. I am just what's happening in this game. I've played PlayStation, play play some online games, or take the day and sleep, or cry, or vent, or you know, the thing that you have to acknowledge those feelings. You're you right. can't ignore those feelings. If you're feeling sad, again, it's grief, right? Because you feel lost. You're losing yeah. this. Acknowledge them. It's okay to cry. It's okay to sleep. It's okay to, you know, be in a funk. But just remember that at some point that funk has to end, right? You got to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and figure out what's going to happen next. So you can acknowledge it, you can do it, you can cry, you can scream, you can sleep, you can, you know, veg on the TV. But I think at some point you have to figure out what your next step is going to be. And, and, and that's, and I think that's the only thing that, you know, because when I did, I tell you, Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I don't even go that serious. I I go to the mind-numbingless point of Fortnite, and I just play with no, all the all the cartoons because I don't even want to think that much of, into it. <laughs> I have to shout it out in the Call of Duty game. Well, I mean, I have I have boys. They play it, so I started playing with them, and you know, and their friends, awesome. and you know, of course, I die all the time, but it's okay. That's okay. They, you know, they'll play with me, but it's mind-numbing because it's. I, I don't yeah. think about it. Exactly. You know, and I, and I think part of you know dealing with this whole pandemic and not just furlough just the entire the lockdowns the change in how you shop you know the masks and all this stuff all of it can be overwhelming yeah all of it it's not just one isolated thing it's not just work it's everything is changing around you everything is different everything has to you know you have to adapt to so and acknowledge those feelings i think i think any any professional you know medical professional will tell you acknowledge those feelings feel it go through it but don't stay in it don't linger in it mm. 
you know, figure out what your next step is going to be. So you acknowledge, you feel it, you lose it. And then what are you going to do about it now? And that's so important to, to, to understand, to acknowledge, right? I mean, you, you, you hit around the head of acknowledging because again, people in general, right? But especially yeah. a lot of times hoteliers where we, you talk, we talk about the smile, right? The hospitality smile. You have to internalize, especially on shift, a lot of things. So we get really good at internalizing all these different emotions and all these different feelings that are still there and they will come out eventually in some capacity whether it be you know it could be anything productive or unproductive i i can't tell you but um if you acknowledge those feelings and you work through them talk to a therapist talk to a professional right. talk to a friend as you mentioned just talk to somebody to, to have these honest discussions and just get those feelings out because internalizing is only going to make it worse it really is. And I'm telling you from experience, it's only going to make it worse. Um, but chastity. Wow. I mean, we're coming up on time here, but that was an amazing conversation. And I think a, a good one, you know, it, it was one where we're talking about again, negative things, but there was positive spins there and your energy just comes right through the camera and got me all amped up. Well, ready. you know, you have to look at it like this, right? We fell into hospitality, but we love it because it's, it's part of who we are. Yeah. It's that I want to make somebody else's day amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. So if somebody listens to this and feels like, you know, okay, hey, maybe I can take that up. Then I did what I was supposed to do. Yeah. Right. I made somebody realize, you know, hey, there's there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's part of what we do as hospitality professionals. You know, it's it's ingrained in us. It's part of who we are. It's not. Like you said, if you're if you're not that type of person, then you don't last very long in hospitality, right? 100%. So, you know, I just hope it brings light to someone and you know who needed to hear it. Um, we're you're not alone. We're all in the same boat. Um, so hopefully, we're just steering it, you know, towards the light, and we'll be okay. Amen to that. And I think that's, <laughs> great. that's a great place to leave it. So Chastity, thank you so much again for being my guest. This was a great, great episode. I cannot wait to get it out for people to see and hear. And I think people are going to really relate and, and take a lot away from our conversation. So thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you for having me, David. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to really wrap this up quick because there's not much else to say on top of that. Chastity, came with some great things today a lot of great takeaways listen if you need to hear it again run it rewind it back listen to it again rewind it back listen to it again bookmark it save it use this as an opportunity to to hear someone who is going through a lot who has lost a lot and is still keeping that positive energy still keeping that positive mindset and kind of hearing what her mindset is to kind of keep that because listen she comes across as a great energetic person because she is, but she's still dealing with it as all of us are. So um, reach out to her, check her out on LinkedIn. She's all, she's available. She's easy to find great person to be in contact with. And we wish her of course the best as I do to everybody else uh, that is either joining me or listening or hearing me. So again, thank you for being my guest today to all of you back next week with another great episode for now, stay tuned, subscribe, check all the stuff out, YouTube, iTunes, podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google, all that stuff, LinkedIn, connect with me so you get the videos every Tuesday. Other than that, we will talk to you in a week. Thanks so much.